You know, if you've ever waited and waited to board your flight and finally you get to take your seat and... Well, folks, we've had light snow overnight and there are still flurries in the area. We're going to go ahead and head over and get in line to de-ice. Yeah, de-icing causes delays, right? And de-icing is not as simple as spraying down the plane with a garden hose of antifreeze. It's a bit more complicated than that. And it's so important for planes to fly. So Jim Cantori standing outside this plane right now. Jim, take us through the science behind de-icing. All right, so there's de-icing and anti-icing, and it's really amazing uh, the way it's done and the way it's crafted. And remember, this doesn't happen right at the gate. Your plane will leave the gate. It will go out to a de-icing pad that's basically ready to take on all that fluid and bring it back and recycle it, not let it just go off into the environment. But here you are sitting on the pad. Uh, this is called glycol, this solution here. It's heated to about 170 degrees. Some say it actually smells a little like maple syrup. This solution essentially is to wash off the snow that is falling. And the type the procedures that we're describing here are in a situation where we not only have precipitation that's happened and accumulated on the plane, but also is expected to continue. And also, we're going to see that plane go up through an area of what we call super cooled water, where your plane acts as a condensation nuclei. And if the water is super cooled, it can actually just stick right to the plane. So, hence, the solutions. The first one again is uh, what we call type one. That's the glycol. That's the heated one. This one is a type four solution. It will go on right afterward. So after they finish the orange solution, here comes the green. This is essentially your antifreeze. All right. This is what prevents the super cool water droplets from adhering to the plane. Now, it's interesting the methods that they use here because they will go from the beginning of the plane all the way to the back of the plane, uh, from the wing tips down to the fuselage, then back toward the tail on down to the wing. It's amazing. What happens, though, if that plane is not de-iced? Let's talk about these super cool water droplets and this condensation nuclei. Well, we know the plane and the metal is going to be below 32 degrees because that's the air that surrounds it. But sometimes water vapor can actually exist below 32 degrees in a liquid form. But if your plane acts as that condensation nuclei, guess where that super cooled water is going to adhere? The plane. And once you start adding ice and adding mass, you start changing the aerodynamics of the wings. You clog up the flaps, as would be the case when you build up ice on them. You completely lose control of the plane. So whether it's 15 minutes, whether it's 20 minutes, and whether it's 30 minutes, de-icing is an essential part of flying especially in the winter months. And Jen, you know, I've actually been on planes that have been de-iced uh, and we had to wait in line long enough where we had to go back and get de-iced again. That solution doesn't last forever. Oh, exactly, Jim. That holdover time after you get de-iced is anywhere from 15 minutes to maybe up to an hour, depending on the weather conditions and what's falling from the sky outside the aircraft. Jim Cantori, that was awesome.